Good afternoon, everyone. This is Jared Rand, and welcome to the Global Guided Meditation Call for Sunday, October 29, 2023, a little after 3.15 p.m. Eastern. We have a recorder that records everything in our life from the beginning to when we leave the body. The recorder is exact and detailed. It does not leave anything out. Now, most of us are not aware of this recorder. And it can it plays back at random things that we have experienced in this lifetime. And it's not you really it's not something that most people know about that they can direct or understand. This is why a lot of the times that you're doing something or you're going somewhere or you're experiencing and you feel as if you've been there before type thing. And some people call it deja vu. Uh, there's different interpretations of it. But when you feel a familiarity, okay, where you're driving somewhere and you, you kind of, well, I've been here before, but you don't know when, okay, it's because the recorder plays that back. And the recorder is our subconscious mind. So it accumulates everything, everything, and then plays it back. So whatever we do, we have a recording of it. It's just absolutely spot on. Now some people would say, well, maybe this is the library where we can go and look at our past lives if we're aware of it. And we know how to access it. Most don't know how to access it. How would you access your subconscious mind? The only way to access it is to go into the now, focus on the breath, and the space between heartbeats. By being in the now, you can step outside the mind and watch the subconscious mind. Almost like a movie theater, right? Except you're the one picking the movies. And then those movies are played. You watch those movies, and then you put another movie in, which is another experience. So it's kind of like your experience showcase that you can access through meditation. See, there is a way of living this life that is so conscious, is so purely intentional and alive, that we are guaranteed to manifest the life we desire. And it happens when we understand and practice the basic manifesting principles of this universe. The first is that our thoughts create our reality. We know that in every moment. And that we are pure consciousness behind each thought. You may choose or not choose to entertain. This is a revolutionary empowering consciousness which is already here now. So when we stop all efforting, scheming, and trying to find it or create it, we instantly see the simple fact that it is here right now. If you want to become richer, more lovable, successful, or even more conscious, that is all fine and dandy. Just know that these are ideas and not the potent, powerful essence of who you are. Consciousness instantly reveals itself when we realize that we are not this mind or its desires. The pure state of consciousness is unfolding our version of reality for us to enjoy. 
And as we decide to perceive it in each moment all around us, it loves us that much. So you surrender to it and investigate this pure consciousness that's here now and how there is nothing you can do to change it. It is the God. The pure consciousness is the God. The reason life can be so challenging is because one main, of one main obstacle, we get over-identified with the mind, and then certain thoughts that it becomes attached to or avoids. And the mind can get hooked like Velcro to certain roles, ideas, feelings, memories, and experiences that make us feel trapped. It's like a spider caught in its own web. The more it struggles, the more it's wrapped up and gets stuck in its own web. The only way out of this mind trap is to surrender to the source of who you are. One of the greatest secrets to untangling yourself and spinning a new web around you is in exploring the truth of what, who you really are. If you just practice using the mind to free the mind from all the thoughts it's been wrapped up in and attached to, you just get more mental activity. Instead of playing the game of the mind, start dismantling it. Let the mind weave the web it wants to weave. Yet choose to focus on the light and consciousness within. This is the most enlightening and empowering place to be and will greatly increase your manifestation vibration. You will become a super manifesting magnet for what you want, so be wise about choosing what you want. The experiences that you'll attract to you can only bring you into a more enlightened perspective when you abide in the knowing that consciousness is natural, effortless, and the essential eternal state of what and who you really are. Be curious about this consciousness. If you think that you know it, let that thought go. It's just a thought and not actually pure consciousness itself. Drop all ideas about who you truly are and liberate yourself completely. This consciousness is truly unknowable and cannot be pinned down as something that you understand once and are forever done with it. It is as, it is as infinite as this universe. And is here for you to explore throughout your entire lifetime. Your job is to gently unfold it and discover this dynamic divine being that you already are. This consciousness is the God source, and it is everywhere. The secret to discovering it is in being vulnerable, open, and receptive to this moment. Be honest with yourself about what your experience is, and then let that experience go. If resistance is there, become that wall and let it go. Explore every experience that arises until it is finished. Your life will become more rich and juicy and full of aliveness. Consciousness is not cold, hard, or rigid by any means. It contains a sacred warmth, that you'll only find in the heart of it. This love is the love of your essence, the God that you are. It is already inside your heart, right here, right now. Just surrender to what is true and real. We're always looking for something, aren't we? We want to find the right teacher, but I say that you are the right teacher. The right teacher is where and what you are. Person, place, or thing is not the right teacher. Robert Adams. 
Gather all courage and take a jump. Even the dewdrop slipping from a lotus leaf trembles for a moment, tries to hang on a little more because he can see the ocean. Once he has fallen from the lotus leaf, he is gone. Yes, in a way, you will not be. Just as a dewdrop dissolves into the ocean, you will be gone. But it is not a loss. You will be oceanic. And all other oceans are limited. The ocean of existence is unlimited or so. I believe that one of the deepest truths is how deeply and intimately we are connected with each other. We are like one grand ocean of energy consciousness that appears to form itself as separate individuated droplets of ocean water. Upon seeing the totality of our existence, it is blatantly obvious that we are operating under one energy source together. There is one common goal for all mankind. This goal is to merge and be unified with the one divine God source. We are here to experience our true vastness, totally being the all-loving, ever-present cosmic ocean. It was apparent how clinging to any one thought of individuated separation is where all of humanity's feelings of powerlessness, poverty, and suffering begins and ends. A quote that Nisargadatta says, let go of the idea that you are not aware of yourself as the ever-present, changeless, inexpressible reality. And what this means is that we are the ones responsible for creating the illusory experience that we are disconnected. Everything is needed and perfect in our world. Even the wonderful illusion of separation is needed so as later we can create an experience of unification. When we accept our deepest illusions, hardest feelings, and most challenging pools of separation consciousness that we are swimming in, we can one day relax and float downstream, merging back into the great ocean. We are always connected with one omnipresent self, we are this single God source that is weaving its ways through everything and everyone. It's just that the mind gets in the way and wants something. It wants to be special, loved, appreciated, and accepted by the world. Most people do not believe this is their heart and thus unknowingly cling to the known, trying to heal liberate or enlighten themselves through holding to certain thoughts and ways of thinking about this life. When the mind becomes narrowed down any one path for too long, it becomes relaxed and tight, like a closed book and cannot receive the new insights and abundance it could grow into. Most enlightening truth we can handle is the one that greatly increases our power, wisdom, inner peace, and manifesting ability. As we evolve closer to the exotic, universal truth of who and what we really are, the universe bestows greater gifts and more beautiful manifestations for us to accept and enjoy. The tricky part is that many of us tend to hold tight onto ideas of the past and future. What we think we know feels comforting, especially when met with the great ocean of unknowns. The most enlightened and highest experience we humans can tap into is one that cannot be captured by the mind, yet it reveals itself naturally and spontaneously when the mind is truly at rest and ease like the feeling we might get from a spontaneous breeze on a hot summer day. 
we soften our hearts, quiet our minds, and become deeply receptive, we can relax into it and deeply enjoy it. The head alone is not enough. It is too small of a container to take in the outrageous experience of enlightenment. The greatest experiences can only be absorbed with an open heart and soul. When the mind is quiet, something inside us instantly aligns with this infinite spiritual essence that is inside everything and everyone. When we devote our life to quieting the mind and opening our heart to the divine source, we can feel, see, and know our real self. What is our real self? It's that part of you who feels deeply, intimately connected with everyone and everything. It is so vast that it also has room for the experience that we are small, powerless, separated beings stuck in small pools of individuated consciousness. Yet it is so much more. The real self is omnipresent, vast as the endless oceans, extremely bright, beautiful, and so powerful that it instantly consumes all the other versions we make up of what reality is. A small warning to the beginner on this spiritual path. It can be quite challenging to just choose to step out of your old self and into this experience of being one with the ocean because everyone around you won't agree or understand what you're going through. We have learned to lean on society for an understanding of who and what we are collectively. We humans have spent the past 2,000 plus years attempting to reconnect with this oneness through religion because we have completely forgotten that we are already permanently connected to the God source. We have spiritual amnesia caused by a societal mind that was buried under the illusion that we are like swine when in truth we are divine. Seeing through this great misunderstanding, we can be liberated from our collective consciousness. We can be free from all suffering, just like how the great masters have done through the ages. This collective awakening is part of the greater plan for our planet's spiritual evolution. As long as this belief in separation is the main way our society operates, we must each rebel against the norm if we are ever to find spiritual freedom. The belief system that we are not one being is the main reason why there is still war, poverty, environmental destruction on this planet. There still remains a belief that we are disconnected. This belief is always being projected, emanating from everybody's mind around you. What everyone believes you are most likely becomes what you believe is true as well. It's safe to say that every single person you have met in life has been overly identified with this idea of a separate self ego, and most likely will fight for upholding the belief in our separation until the very end. It takes a very clear mind, a courageous heart, and a determined soul to break free from the matrix of illusions that this society is casting over our eyes. Observe the mind. When thoughts come, ask to whom do these thoughts come to? Always watch, witness, and observe. Do not get caught in the thought. Just surrender. Robert Adams. To be free from societal programming, we must choose first to be free from our ego. For our ego is e to even exist at all 
it must hold firm onto some belief in its separate nature. If it doesn't do this, it will feel very lost, confused, and afraid, and eventually give up. The ego must believe that it is a separate somebody rather than an om omnipresent nobody. It's been trained to believe it is a drop of water and not the entire ocean as well. We are the drop of water, and we are the entire ocean as well. This individuated approach to life has a great payoff of creating a feeling of power, control, and direction in life. Without the ego, we might believe that all our outcomes and manifestations show us show up because we are the universe, and the universe is making everything happen. Without the ego, we would only have a feeling of love, abundance, true empowerment, and real inner peace in this life. The greatest truth can find, that we can find, the truth of, is going to be the one that liberates us from this limited, contracted mind ego. The truth that frees our spirit is the one that brings forth the deepest feeling of joy into the lives of everyone around us. This truth is found from intimately knowing our real self, our permanent, unbounded, infinite spiritual nature, only from exploring what it feels like to be at one with the ocean of life. Can we be free? This exploration is what leads us to find full self-realization and true liberation in the end. Relax into this idea and feeling that you are separate from the universe right now. Rest deeply into the feeling that you are not at the core of the God source right now. Start with becoming very curious about this idea. Feel into it, what it actually means until you make friends with it. The goal would be to let yourself completely melt into the feeling of separation and have zero resistance to it. With a little practice, you might discover what it's like to be connected within your experience of separation. The most healing, loving, magical, empowering source in this universe is in everything. So it's also in this experience of separation. The more you can relax into it, the more you open your heart and quiet your mind to find that the experience of deep separation dissolves itself naturally on its own accord. When the core of separation we will discover the most profound, powerful, unstoppable, and intimate direct connection to this pure channel of intelligent, conscious energy that breathes our very core. To just dive into the deepest root of all your problems, faults, self-criticism, and personal issues, these are where you feel the most separate, and disturbed. Don't wait until it's the right time to do it. Just relax into them every day, whenever and wherever you are. Make it the number one priority of your life to find this loving divine connection that is already here. Trust that it is already here, even if you cannot find it right away. Act as if you are being held like a newborn baby in the most loving, caring mother's arms. By simply resting into this feeling of separation, and you will make amazing progress on your spiritual path in the matter of minutes. You are the supreme being, and yet thinking yourself to be separate from it, you strive to become united with it. What is stranger than this? When one begins their spiritual path, there is this feeling that who we are is more unreal than real. What I mean by this is that it can be shocking to discover 
that what we thought we were our entire lives is not real. We truly have no clue as to who and what we really are. We are that which is beyond what the mind can understand. We are like the infinite edges of the most massive movie screen you can imagine, which has no end to the colorful creative possibilities it could contain. Our freedom comes from knowing our undefinable nature. When we realize that we are more like a blank, multi-dimensional creative canvas and not all the scenes and stories from the grand film, something inside of us feels very vast and free. So I invite you to sit back. Take a good look at your life. Take one evening to investigate all the wonderful, horrific, typical, unusual, and peak states from your life. Notice if they sum up everything about who and what you are. Is there anything more than this? Ask yourself, what is my real self? Who am I without all these experiences? Do I still exist without these memories? And if so, what exactly is that? Our real self is beyond the greatest mystery anyone could explore. We are much more amazing and magical than this separated mind ego. We are bigger than all the life experiences that are projected onto us and into us. We are also much more than the pure witness, awareness, and consciousness. We are the totality of it all. We are that which life gets to play, dance, and sing all of itself through. The separate limited suffering self is a comfortable habit, one that can be dropped by simply knowing how to stop identifying with it. You are neither consciousness nor its content. You are the timeless source the supreme reality. Trust that, Nisargadatta. The discovery of the real self is a profound spiritual exploration. The realization of who we truly are is a timeless experience that eventually becomes the death of our ego and the beginning of real freedom. Now, ironically, the death of our ego and the beginning of real freedom is it is our deepest innermost battle for freedom our resistance to total surrender that perpetuates the ego when we stop fighting we begin clearly seeing the truth is revealed when there is no more need to push pull prove or fight for anything when we stop the struggle against what is the ego's clouded existence drops and something greater enlightens our way. As long as we continue to pursue this life thinking we are only a separate being limited in power, love, abundance, and self-expression, we will get attached to goals thinking that they will make us happy. Be very careful not to think that these limited ideas have anything to do with who you are. The concepts of ownership, my life, my body, my thoughts, my stuff, my reality, and my mind are the only thing perpetuating our human experiences of suffering. Drop these ideas and see what is left. Nothing is actually yours, and everything is yours when you realize your real self. There is no more need for the feeling of possession when we see that we are infinite spiritual beings already intimately connected to everything. Why would we need to attain something when we already feel connected with it? Desire is only form out of separation. When we sit and meditate on who we are, 
looking deeply within these, inside ourselves, eventually the mind will become quiet. When this occurs, we experience the truth that we are eternal beings filled with a great love, magic, and lightness. By knowing this inside, we naturally start living it. We really don't have to be afraid of letting go and trusting our real self. The one source will move us, guide us, shape our minds to reconnect with the hearts and souls of everyone. Living from this space, we finally reach a sense of peace with everything in our lives every day. We wake up and begin practicing being as vast and unlimited as the great infinite universe we are surrounded by. By playing an active role in this life, living out this realization in the sea of people around you, then something dawns on you that you are truly free. When you see the world clearly, that everything is an expression of you, the real self, you stop hearing what you don't want to hear. You stop seeing what you don't want to see or you don't care to see. And you stop feeling what you don't care to feel. Your mind is only fixated on the brilliant diamond of consciousness that it's found. You realize that the world is your mirror. Everyone is always reflecting back to you who you are. If you see an unhappy person, that person is inside you. When you're truly enlightened, the experience of the divine awakening, being, begins showing up in everyone in the most interesting ways. You are in an ever-flowing river of gratitude all day long. So become courageous on this path. Take the risk to meditate. Quiet your mind all day long. Soon, you'll come to know that what it means to be self-realized. Remember to love yourself, worship yourself, pray to yourself, devote your life to yourself, find joy in yourself, because God dwells in you as you. Robert Adams. Hold an intention, kind of a fun little experiment. Hold an intention to move down out of your head and relax into your heart. Your head will be sneaky and try to take over many, many, many times. Yet just bring your energy into your heart space. Imagine your heart is your favorite flower opening its petals up to the great sun. Feel the light entering your heart. It is melting any walls you have inside around feeling loved. Now pick one person in your past who you are not 100% at peace with. Let these warm walls around your heart melt away and merge with the heart of this person Two, feel the sunlight is always inside their heart. Let go of whatever the mind judges about them. The goal is to be 100% at peace with this person for the rest of your life. When you can do this successfully with one person, do it with everyone from your past. Take this on as an invitation to be at peace with everyone on this planet in the past and future. Practice this and imagine how that will be. Healing simply happens when we are deeply authentic and real with ourselves. When we each stop repressing the truth of who we are and are open with how we are honestly feeling, our real self receives full permission to come out of hiding. Then it's easy to see the truth. 
we can easily stop so invested in the opinions of others. Stop being so invested in the opinions of others. We can no longer hesitate, recoil, and retreat in fear of another's disapproval. It's your choice. If you are ever free from the judger inside you who is not okay with others as they are and you as you are. There exists a deeper, mature part which can accept everything inside you. You can stop trying to pretend that you are more adult-like than how you really feel inside. To identify oneself with the body and yet to seek happiness is like attempting to cross a river on the back of an alligator, Ramana Marishi. Merging is from the highest path a person can take. Moving into your most enlightened self comes from seeing that everyone is you in disguise. It's up to you to remember who you truly are. With enough meditation practice, there comes this realization that you are in me and I am in you. The divine real self that we all are is impossible not to see. We realize it is everywhere and has no actual boundaries. It is not terrified of intimacy with anyone. It loves letting go, shape-shifting, merging with everyone in this universe. It knows that if you cannot see God in all, you cannot see God at all. I have faith that most of us will eventually find our real self. Eventually the gold will sink in and we will naturally dive deeper within ourselves and liberate ourselves from the controlling, separating ego mind. My greatest advice to everyone is this. Be gentle with your exploration. Be compassionate with what you find. This life is the deepest mystery. And the more we can uncover who we are, the more we see that we have just scratched the surface. And there is so much more there is to be revealed. In the midst of winter, I found there was within me an invisible, invincible summer, Albert Chemis. I'll join you in the meditation, and I'll return to close this out.
Take an easy and slow breath in through the nose and an easy and slow breath out from the mouth. Remain still. This universe is abundant and overflowing with positive energy. Just stop whatever you're doing and notice this. The moment you pay attention to this abundance, you resisting it from coming in. Take seven minutes and meditate on all the abundance in this universe right now. Let your mind get out of the way and explore what it feels like to think expansively. Know that everything you can imagine, you can experience. Take this with you for the rest of the day into the evening and night and the fall and morning. And we will return here Monday, October 30, 2023, at 3.15 p.m. Eastern to continue our global guided meditation call. Be gentle, kind, generous, and humble with yourself at all times. Be in the highest of the highest high, deepest of the deepest, deepest, and purest of the purest, purest. Eternal gratitude at all times. No matter what's going on within or outside of you.